touched. Play on, play on. Jonas, oh, well knocked away by Viney. Really well done. We're on the move now. Little push off, James Harms. Tyson around his body nicely into the space. <laughs> oh, look at the numbers. Patterson. Options in the middle. Good opportunity for Annenberg. Handball over the top. And over the top from the goal line. Easy as you like for Jeff Gala. They got there eventually, Jono, but it was really interesting. Cam Pedersen gets the ball. He's got two players running with him, and then tries to square the kick up. He was faced with a lot of options. He had to think his way through, didn't he? Yeah, he, did. he had to, and look, in the end, it worked out well. But what, what hope has Peter Hart got and O'Shea <laughs> here working 2v4? Eventually, some poor players tried to get back, but it was it was way too late, and, and that's the... That's going to be an interesting thing leading into the first few rounds of the home and I. I hope it stays like this where we're seeing good transition. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of goals over the top, yes, but we're seeing some good, quick football. He's important to their structure, isn't he, Pollock? Like with his power running and his ability to kick it so effectively. Schultz, Jenner steals it. Salem gets a Salem. Well, they needed that, the Deeds. Christian Salem was the one that had just been pinged for burrowing, trying to uh, run through about four players, I think. Where's his position at the front? He was playing on uh, Matty White, actually, you can see there. So his first year was, was as a half forward. He did some quite uh, quite nice things, a few tricks here and there, and, and kicked a few goals. And back to half back last year because they liked the way that he used the ball. He's run off that position, and that we know how important that kick out of D50 is these days but pushing forward once again following his man and getting a getting a result second rucking today now they look more polished in the first term port adelaide but melbourne have created opportunities and here's another hogan held it long enough it's a good one out opportunity and that's what you do want to do now we spoke about the best places to kick the footy but there's nothing wrong with kicking deep into a pocket to a jesse hogan one-on-one -on -one to give him those sort of opportunities that's his job. He'll take those contested marks more often than not. And it doesn't always look the most fluent run-up, but he's, he's not a bad kick for goal either. And that's a good way. He's an experienced campaigner getting more time than your 30 seconds. <laughs> Sneaking in Just a little... Do the laces up. Yep. Umpire's doing the same. <laughs> so he's not going to ping him. The NAB rising star of last year. He's put off contract talks, but he is signed until the end of 2017. And he is a superstar on the rise, Jesse Hogan. Excellent, excellent kick there from Hogan. You can see him out the back here, and look, that's what he likes. He gets time in space like that. He's, and the ball's kicked to the right spot. You're right, Jase. He's going to mark every one that comes near him. But uh, with, in terms of his run-up, he's got a lot of hops. Have a look at this, yeah, Jono. What's but, he doing? But look at the last four or five steps. Everything's straight. Fluent, everything's yeah. fluent. And that's all that you you ask for when you... And you... Look, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you about it. You've, you're the best in the business. But your Laban, when you went through it, your last four or five steps were straight, strong, and through the footy. Deal and GWS got Jacob Hopper. And both Wiedemann and Hopper... Well, Jono, you know them pretty well. Both expected to be pretty good players as Gorn yeah, they makes were. the mark. Yeah, so Wiedemann will get a chance uh, tomorrow from, from all reports. And, and Hopper found the going tough against the, the Bulldogs early on. He trailed around with Bot and Pelly for a bit. In the second half, looked a little bit more comfortable and was able to get on the scoreboard. And... Oh, Gee, reckon... he's given a second opportunity yeah, here. You're exactly right. If he had have kicked the goal, I reckon he calls advantage. Yep. But because he missed, he's bringing it back for the set shot. Shouldn't matter. Player's responsibility. Well, I think they took it off the players, didn't they? Back to the umpires. But okay. they have been very free in paying the advantage yep. throughout the course of this first half. So it's the umpire's call that Jeff Garlett's unlikely to kick it from there, <laughs> yeah. so bring it back. Yeah. Jeff, you're a horrible user of the ball. Give it back to Cam Pedersen. <laughs> and that's another. Cam Pedersen kicks a brilliant goal. Something else the AFL need to clarify over the pre-season. They've got the prior opportunity to clarify. They've got the third man up rules to clarify. Need to clarify this advantage situation. It's very quick, but it's a clear, he's clearly taken that that uh, that advantage. So if you miss, you miss. I think as a player, you know, yeah. you, you know. Centering kick, Kent met hard, and the hole. 
That's, that's, yeah, is, that's an opportunity lost, Jono. Yeah, they're clear run. It was a great handball in traffic. Oh, I couldn't pick up who it was, but the release right handball right was brilliant. They were out then, and the kick just had to be a lot better. He could actually oh, could turn over there. He could actually get running, Garland, as well. Matt Jones with a short pass. He's going to get his set shot now after all of that. Yep. So he probably should have been lining up from a similar sort of spot. Yeah, that's right. The but kick the was too deep, wasn't it? Just went too deep to where Broadbent was able to spoil it. It's good to see Dean Kent back in the lineup. Came back in the VFL late last season, but he was in some really good form before he did that hamstring. Yeah, four pretty good games. Hamstring off the bone, as you mentioned earlier. And that ended his AFL season, even though he did make a comeback in the twos late. That moves through the air, but it's there. Good start for third for Melbourne. They just look good kicks, left footers, don't they? <laughs> natural. Looks easy, yeah. Very natural. But you can see that's he's on the mark there. Look, Port Adelaide messed this up here with their, their exit out of defensive 50. But look, Melbourne could have made it a lot easier on themselves as well with that first entry that we that we spoke about. In, in a way, they get the shot at goal and get the result they're after. But I think that's the difference. He's making the most of the easier opportunities that, that fall their way. Easy goals is what they'll be after as a side. Makes things a lot easier through the whole team. Wrong there. You, mate. And a good mark to Harlan. Play on quick. O'Shea. This is when they're dangerous, Port Adelaide. These top players start running the ball. All, all back into trouble. Robbie Gray and Impey. Smart enough to He's get out of it. But Gray on. from Melbourne. Kennedy. Arala. Perfect start to the third. And Ben Kennedy, one of the new recruits, has his moment in the sun. I well, couldn't have been more wrong, John. I was just starting to say Robbie Gray was involved. Joe and Impey, the types that can run and carry and link up. But the, the Melbourne pressure was outstanding. Close space extremely well here. You can see this one here. The player coming up on Robbie Gray to, for first. Then they were able to close up Impey. And then they had numbers at ground level to clean up the loose ball. And Ben Kennedy doesn't miss from, from these opportunities. A couple of times down this quarter, Port Adelaide turned the ball over in this position here. And Melbourne have been able to capitalise. And that would please Simon Goodwin, Paul Ruse, all the coaches. It's a good finish by Ben Kennedy. And great to see... Well, three Melbourne players yeah, surging with him. him that could have run the ball in, but that goal, I think, would please Paul Roos and Simon Goodwin as much as any today. Gorn, they've lifted their rate. The Ds, confidence rising. Garland Long, well, Red Pittard, he takes off on Viney. Watts hunts him down, but he gets the kick towards half forward. Again, Schultz crashes that pack. Kennedy, another touch. Garland. Gorn, done. And the space on the open side. To go back and get it though. Jaden Hunt. And the oh, young player. That's 50. That was silly, Camo Shea. He took the option, taking the full 50 to go for six. He can go for the six. He can go for so you heard the explanation. He can take the full 50 and kick from inside 50 and have a six-pointer or have the kick from just outside. But the man on the mark's not going to come in much more than 10 metres from the 50 anyway, is he? Interesting. And the, been a long can he change his mind now? Yeah, it's a good 50 <laughs> metres. Massive. That's a cracking 50-metre penalty. And the man that gave it away, Cam O'Shea, um, when, when you sit back and you look at that, you think, what did I get out of it? Yeah. Absolutely no benefit. In line with me. Right. He's got a he glove rule waiting. Stay with me. And a bigger restricted yeah. zone this year around the man with yep. the ball. For set shots. Matt Jones. Delightful. Four in a row for the Demons. It's been a good quarter from, from Melbourne there. Dominating disposal, 42 to to 30 and got that on the board now they're, they're getting good inside 56 of them and scoring they've scored five out of the six entries five times in the six entries so been very effective in that part of the in that part of the game as well right across the board they're uncontested work they're in front in this quarter they've started this third quarter with uh, on their toes they're proactive they're running well and they're getting reward for it going he was getting some really good ball 
Um, he slowed up a little bit since that point. 18 disposals last week, and he's tracking along to have another probably 18 disposal game uh, this week as well. Another free kick for Melbourne here, but he shot for goal. Yes, he grabbing the jumper. There you go. You heard the umpire say, grabbing the jumper. So this is for five goals in a row. We saw Collingwood last night away from home in an amazing run, kicked 10 goals in a row against the Cats and turned that game on its ear. His last couple of kicks haven't been great, Jeffy Garlett, but this one should make no mistake. Keep out, keep out the 10. That's what he's got ahead of him, and that was never in doubt. And the Demons, surprisingly enough, take the lead by two points. Oh, I think you can see down on the boundary line, they're just going in a lot harder here, yep. Melbourne. They're winning the contested ball. They're winning the clearances. And you heard Simon Goom at half-time just say they want to be a bit tougher on the outside. Well, they're getting the ball out and moving it quite well. This is by far their best patch of the game and best patch of football that they've played today. And uh, they'll be very excited about this. Homsch. Loby. Eva. Fantastic to see this intensity right now, especially from the D's. Jaden Hunt. That's better from Jaden Hunt. That went the bare 15. They can go back now and have a set shot. It was the one they missed earlier. They missed a couple of those this quarter with the short pass going inside 50. Yep. They hit that one. They had to hit that one. They need reward for that. The effort that they've been putting in. Do you see the Jackson Trengove tackle? It was like a slow motion train wreck. He was taking forever, <laughs> looking forward. It was looking never forward. get it, wasn't it? That came from nowhere. <laughs> James Harms to give Melbourne their biggest lead of the afternoon. And brings that back to perfection. Melbourne by eight. It's a good finesse kick. He was obviously just outside his comfort zone as far as distance range was concerned. He just went way out to the right. Here's Trango just looking for options, well, looking for options. And Garlop ran him down. Great tackle. And again, it's pressure in their defensive 50 that's created turnovers and led to opportunities. Boys, I've got Ken Hinkley at three-quarter time. Does any of you guys bring your mouth? <laughs> I don't think he's going to be too happy with this quarter. They're getting their pants pulled down here. The inside 50s are 11 to 3. It's five goals to zip. They're getting smashed in contested possessions and clearances. Their disposal efficiency is 59% as opposed to Melbourne's 82. Harms sidestep delightful. Watts. Gee, had a big piece of it. Vandenberg still can make something of it. Impey tracks him down. Oh, got him high. Oh. Oh. Dean <laughs> Kent just got bumped into the yeah. Pyro Shays oh. into him. He'd be lucky he doesn't give away another 50. Yeah. He looks very angry, Cam O'Shea. I don't know if something happened in a little exchange there, but he was... Uh, there you go, Jimmy Tumpus got one. A blood rule. So maybe something did happen that didn't please him. Check side. Vandenberg. She's oh, made good a good one. fit to that. Oh, you're kidding. The Demons threatening to steal this one away from home. Did you hear the conversation there between umpire and players? There's a little bit of spikes coming to this. There's been a few things off the ball. Let's have a look at Jimmy Tumpers here. Well, that's just a head clash. That's a head clash. Salem was picking up the ball. Nothing untoward about that. Nothing that Christian Salem could do. No, he's just looking to get his arms up to get the handball away. This is a great goal, though, Jason. Oh, that is huge. That's, to bend the ball over that distance. Grimes. Goal square brought back. Oh. The beautiful ripper mark. Vandenberg in the middle of a six pack. He ended he, up third in line. He's, yeah, he's got better as the game's gone on. This will be possession number 18 Jimmy, Jimmy now for Vandenberg. He's already kicked the one goal. And this should be the answer to the early goal in this last term that Port Adelaide kicked. Talked about him a bit. Talked about him a lot last year. From out of nowhere as a mature player from Canberra to rookie list to one of their best in Melbourne's best 22. There was his tackling last year, his competitiveness as a forward. I think that was the standard. That's what certainly started to get everyone excited about the way that he played his footy. Good run here and a good kick to the top of the square from, from Grimes. And there he is, just in the middle of the pack, actually. I thought that was him at the back. It was Pedersen at the back. What he did do was get rid of his opponent 
Broadbent with Good a little bump up. to give him yeah. the space. And he's a bit bigger than Matthew Broadbent. Good lump of a lad. Harms. Oh, he just dropped oh, that was that. robbed it. And the crowd knew about it as well. Yeah. Garlic. It's a two on two. Goal square. And a brilliant mark, Patterson. They are putting Port Adelaide under enormous pressure, and a lot of it is coming from clearance work. The work that Max Gorn's doing in the ruck. He's, he's done a monster of work. He's had 15 possessions, seven clearances himself, and distributing the ball beautifully around the stoppages. Chase the hit out to 44 26 in favour of Melbourne as well, so uh, he really is giving first use of the ball. Shouldn't miss from there, doesn't miss from there. And it's a 21 point margin, Melbourne's biggest lead of the game. Very, very impressive performance from the Melbourne Football Club today. They've got better as the game's gone on. You just see the ball spills out eventually. There was probably a drop in there, so they had a little slice of luck, but this is good strength. Eyes on the footy. And he's still upset, Cam O'Shea. Yeah. He's in a grumpy so mood. I suppose it's Alipati Carlisle's the only other really Tiny big league. defender, isn't it, to come back. Yep. Stretch. This is for nine. Viney goes the short pass. Just over Hogan. Oh, One down from behind. That's a throw. And O'Shea was angry before. What's it going to be like now? Did the umpire blow his whistle early then? Oh. I think he Look, dropped it before he punched yeah, it, Yeah, there was it? a little bit, you think. He's got a good fist on it in the end. It's just whether it, the distance from his hand, if there was any. That's your line right there. Mark is just Jackson, here. Right Boys, this will be nine goals to one in the second half if he kicks it. Hold that. With me, Jackson. You just don't expect that. Ten ten against the Port Adelaide team that looked to have things ten under control. Melbourne have just found another gear. And from a team that finished 13th last year, just seven wins. Port Adelaide, high expectations for top four. They are getting spanked at the moment by a team that's harder at it. And Kent's landed another one. Well, when you say harder at it, you look, at, you look straight at contest, contested possessions. 121 in Melbourne's favour to 87. Here's the throw here. Kent comes in from behind. Yeah, drop yeah, and throw. throw. Yeah, great call by the ump. Very good decision. But that's where it is. It's contested possessions and clearances. So clearances have got an advantage 40 to 25. So those two areas of the, of the game is where, especially the second half, is where Melbourne's really jumped away. Port Adelaide, obviously closer to where they're getting to in terms of their practice form leading into home and away season at 81. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting number, isn't it? Because most teams have tried to make it as realistic as, as in home and away football, right. yeah, but Melbourne haven't. Garland out the back. Jeffy Garland should run in. Open goal, had a bounce and slams it home. He wasn't going to chance that one, Jeff <laughs> Garland. He wasn't going to worry about, do I need a good kick? He tucked it under the arm and he went for the finish line. Coast to coast as well, so... That's well a, done, that's ben a good Kennedy. effort. Kept his yep. feet, rode the bump, got the ball moving quickly. And then he, he didn't want to have to kick it from anywhere other than on the goal <laughs> line. First goal of this term. Looked like they were pressing Still forward. Late. Melbourne oh, steady. No, you, you and then just uh, put the foot down. They've done well. I know it's a massive ground. You've spoken about that already, Dwayne. But they've, they've made the ground really big in this second half, Melbourne. They've got really wide, spread wide, so they can allow leading passages coming back inboard as well. So if they need to go wide to get out, they've been okay. But when they've pulled the trigger back inboard with a dangerous so kick through the guys, corridor, it, the players had space to move into. That, to Tyson to line up and seal the That's deal. Seen some fantastic players Bobby, use the space down. on this oval right to perfection the during their careers. Probably John Platten, one of the greatest of all was, time. The rat was a ripper. He was an Elizabeth boy, wasn't he? Michael O'Loughlin. Stay behind, Robbie. Mark Rusciuto might know who's a little better than those two, but they're the ones that come to mind as the best of all time from here. As this one is over, Melbourne are going to get the chocolates.